Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining the Sienna Solutions Challenge student panel discussion during the Youth Made Festival. Um, today's panel discussion will be featuring student teams from Canada, Costa Rica, and India. My name is Carissa Bowen, and I'm the Senior Project Manager working on the Learning Experience Design Team here at Digital Promise. And today I'll be your panel moderator. Um, I'm also joined by my co-host, Jess Alanis, um, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jess Alanis, and I'm from Texas in the United States. I'm a learning experience designer here at Digital Promise, and I support various initiatives like the CNN Solutions Challenge and the Youth Meet Festival. I'll be moderating the chat and Q&A today, and you're more than welcome to leave comments and questions for the very talented students presenting today. Awesome. Um, thank you, Jess. And uh, a message to the audience, if you um, need, your, uh, need any captions to be available for you as we uh, go throughout the webinar, um, please uh, take a look at the bottom of your screen and you should be able to enable closed captioning. Um, so that uh, they can always, it can, all the captions can always show up um, during the webinar. Another message uh, to the audience, as you listen to today's presentations, we invite you to share your thoughts, your observations, any questions that were raised for you during the project uh, presentations from students. Um, we welcome you to share your thoughts in the chat box. You can also share any questions that you might have um, directly towards a project. Uh, you can share them in the Q&A function of the um, Zoom. Um, so when you are selecting, um, if you are using the chat box to share any questions, maybe you're sharing something that you learned. Um, maybe there was a reflection for you um, that today's discussion made you think of. Maybe you found something unique or inspiring. Um, if you have any of these um, reflections and you're wanting to share them in the chat box, please be sure to select everyone um, so that everyone can see your responses. Uh, so if this is your first time hearing about the Sienna Solutions Challenge, I'm going to give you a little bit of context of uh, what the project is and how we got here. And so uh, the Sienna Solutions Challenge is a global design a challenge that invites middle and high school students uh, from all different parts of the world um, and teachers to design solutions to real problems or issues that they care about. And it invites uh, students to take action to build a better world around them. Uh, since launching in 2021, more than 550 teachers uh, from schools and youth organizations across 67 countries have engaged with the Sienna Solutions Challenge uh, using the challenge-based learning framework, teachers and students collaborated to think really big about compelling issues. They asked meaningful questions, did a lot of investigating methods or used a lot of investigating methods, um, asked thoughtful questions and designed actionable solutions to those, uh, to those questions. Uh, student teams submitted their creative products like podcasts, digital games, apps, data visualizations, um, uh, interactive maps, or something else, uh, leveraging digital tools and technologies to address the challenges that they identified. And so students uh, submitted their projects uh, to be um, considered for a, a $2,500 USD sustainability award. And that award will help students to scale and sustain their solution. Uh, and so um, a team of, we worked, uh, collaborated with uh, the Sienna employee volunteers um, and those volunteers assisted each team submission while providing meaningful feedback to each project. And so uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank um, any Sienna employee volunteers that are joining us today in the audience for their time spent um, thoughtfully providing feedback that inspires, motivates, and encourages each team to continue to scale and sustain their designs for the future. So I'm just uh, wanted to share a comprehensive list of our uh, 2023 um, Sienna Solutions Challenge Sustainability Awardees. Uh, and so this is just a list of um, our second year um, in the cycle of Sienna Solutions Challenge 
awardees. And so we participated, we collaborated with um, and learned a lot from a lot of the teams that you see here and many, many more, whether it be from attending a professional learning session or submitting a project. Um, we are really proud to celebrate the student teams joining us today and throughout the remainder of the Youth Made Festival. So um, this is our, the, this is the list of our panelists today. So you will hear from student teams from uh, Fisher Park Summit, Alternative Public School in Ottawa, Canada. Um, you'll hear from students uh, from San, San Diego Bilingual High School in Costa Rica. And then um, finally, you'll also hear from student teams from uh, Vicus Bradrati Public School in Delhi, India. Um, so we will spend about 30 seconds breaking the ice um, in the chat box. We'd love to hear from uh, panelists around um, you know, some of your thoughts on why you enjoy making art, activism, or design in your community. So if you um, would like to, students, if, you, if someone wants to jump off of mute and share um, a little response about you know, why you enjoy making art, activism, or designing your community, we'll spend about 30 seconds on this now. And if you uh, prefer to use the chat box, be sure to include your name and the country you are joining from today. Feel free to keep responding in the chat box. Um, and we will move on to our first presentation. So we will hear from the Fisher Park Summit Alternative Public School students um, around their big idea on being change makers, community and sustainability. Their essential question is, what can we design and build to help with the SDGs that uses high hydraulics? And so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and um, students from Canada, feel free to take it away. Hi, we're students from Fisher Park Summit Alternative. There were over 250 students that uh, participated in this challenge. And here are a few examples of what we created using mnemonics and hydraulics. One example was uh, three of us, me included, we did a solar panel that moved. Uh, it was made so that the solar panel is always getting direct sunlight and is always facing the sun. Some things that we could have benefited are having an actual solar panel uh, or something that would uh, rep have it represented it better other than just a piece of cardboard that was painted or something other than syringes, like maybe pistons or just something else. And our UN goal was affordable and clean energy. And having a solar panel that senses where the sun is allows them to have more energy and more consistently because the panels can move towards the sun. Hopefully having um, a solar panel that can always have sunlight, it creates more energy and then it will be less expensive. Um, yeah, it would be great to have more materials and it was a fun project to do. Benny. Oh, uh, hello, my name is Benny. And for my project, I designed a wheelchair that used hydraulic presses to lift the person up so they could maybe reach more, so that it could reach higher things. I did this project with two people who aren't here right now. One of them is in Britain. Uh, something that could have benefited the project would have probably been able to have the wheels spin because right now they weren't too mobile. Hi, so we made a hydraulic powered fan. We use a motor and a battery to help it move up and down and move it around. And then we really wanted to do something like this to hopefully help with like the sustainability issue with so many fans costing so much money and using so much um, unsustainable materials around the world. And just love some more materials in the future to be able to make it even bigger and make it even better. Thank you. Right 
So uh, this is a project I didn't personally do, but the person who made this project isn't here right now. So this project is a hydraulic arm that can help pick up trash. So instead of using uh, gloves or using your hands, which could be dangerous when dealing with needles or other garbage that's not safe to pick up, it would give a uh, more fast, uh, easy and uh, probably better way to clean up the environment for a lot less of cost. And it can help with uh, the um, goal number 13 for climate action. These students aren't here today, so I'll just present this one really quickly. Oh, you are here. Sorry. I thought that was the, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. One, one group isn't here. No. I'll so this is this is our project. What we made is we made a pretty much a scoop that we would put in like a river that would collect trash from the river flowing down and would then dump it outside of the river to help clean the waters, uh, which would affect the 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 goals 13 and 14 climate action and life below water yeah. i'm just going to present with erin for the rest of you can't do you want to talk? Do you want me to talk? Um, so basically, we created a hydraulic press that will compress sideways or down first, and then it makes it should make it a perfect cube because you squish it like one way and then you squish it the other, and uh, it helps with the ninth um, uh, goal. It helps with the ninth goal. Uh, which is uh, like helping in industries and uh, yeah, like helping industries pack stuff and ship it and stuff. Get rid of this for Lawrence. I won't show the video. Okay. So um, just to say, we had a lot of fun making these projects. It was super uh, fun. <laughs> And it also helped teach us about the development goals along with hydraulic pneumatics. So in science class, we were able to learn uh, how to help the environment, uh, hydraulic pneumatics and how to use them instead of just learning from a textbook or from videos. It was more hands-on and I quite enjoyed it. And I think everyone else here enjoyed it. This project let people feel like they could contribute and help the global goals. And I think a lot of people will continue to look and work with technical goals to do this project. We thank you so much for inviting us here today. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, we are really looking forward to seeing what your comments are from the audience. If there are any questions um, for our Canada team, um, feel free to share them in the chat box or in the Q&A function. And we are actually going to move on to the next um, Slide if you want to stop sharing your screen. Thank you. And we are going to move on with our next uh, team from Costa Rica. And so we have the San Diego bilingual high school students um, that are going to share their big idea around uh, sewing with a purpose. Their essential question is, can I purpose purposefully rescue the lives of others from my school. And so I'm going to stop sharing. And students from Costa Rica, feel free to share your screen and you may take it away. Good morning. Today we're going to present our project that it is called Symbiosis, but since originally it's in Spanish, it is Symbiosis, and we are Interact San Diego. This is our team members. Well, me, Daniela. And me, Amela. And me, Leonora. Me, Isaac. 
Me, Emma. Me, Jimena. And me, Lucia. Okay, so firstly, what is Interact? Interact is a club for common service with an animal, social, and environmental focus. In here, we have some images. In the first one, we show like we did an activity with animals that the activity was called like uh, something to help like the dogs and to help like how can we help the, the ones that are living in the street. And the second one was a project to help people that were in need in, in social like problems. And here we have other achievements on Interact. We have a certificated, we have donations of wheelchairs. We did Hora del Espíritu Santo, that is, uh, we did communal service with this organization. We have the Family and Dog Day, the one that I mentioned earlier, uh, Bienestar Animal, that we go to organization and help clean stuff. Uh, we have uh, the next one that is Ayla, that we will like check over plants, over trees and go, uh, bring them like water and make them like clean. The another one is Mi Hermano Menor. There was an activity that we take care of these children and we did like a happy Christmas for them. And the last one was a donation of TVs for the community of, of a center that works with older people. Okay, what is symbiosis? Symbiosis means a bond of health between different species, according to Cambridge Dictionary. Okay, um, let's do uh, this project in four steps. Planting crops, take care of the scrub, produce compost, and harvest and selling products. The compost, then we're going to make our own compost for the crops. And each of the participants um, will have their own crop and each of one will be responsible for ensuring that crop are in, in good condition. So the main purposes that we have are basically helping everyone who needs it, teach about responsibility to our school and community, protect the environment, and also be a model for other schools. Well, where will the donation go? Uh, we have two organizations that we go to give the donations. That is uh, Santiago Crest for Nursing Home and uh, Al Niño Con Cariño Association. So we have plenty of experience participating in campaigns and programs. We have been participating in Ecological Blue Flag for 19 years. And we have an educational commitment to fulfill the sustainable development goals, the goal four uh, of quality of education, the goal 10 of reduced inequalities, and the goal 12 of responsible consumption and production. Our real concern, after the pandemic crisis, the lack of empathy made it clear that many social groups were abandoned without enough food. We are in the phase one that is uh, presenting the project, uh, then training the students and teachers and prepare, preparing the containers for planting. What will our students do from the, from the rest of the year? Sowing crops, we are not going to start planting from the seed since it will already be germinated. Maintenance, one day per week, they need to check if their vegetables are in good condition. Composting, we will create our own compost. Pesticides, we are going to create our own pesticides. Brands, our students will create a brand so they can sell their products. Enterprise, they will know how the real world of enterprise is. Sale, the students will sell the products and social help with the money we, re we recollect, we're going to give to different organizations. Um, team from Costa Rica, do you mind if we move to the next presentation and you can share this video in the chat box because we have three more presentations. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to share the YouTube link in the chat box, um, people will be able to view it. 
Thank you so much for your presentations. If anyone in the audience has any questions for the um, student team from Costa Rica, please share your insight and your reflections with them and we will be able to share it at the end of the call. And um, we have our final group, which has three different projects from our student team in India. Their um, big idea was around saving energy. So we have the hybrid agro-technology um, project, the saver of food grains and air conditioner power optimizer. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and student team from India, you all can take it away. Greetings to all. We are Team Agroeco Innovators from India. India is a country of producers. In India, even today in the modernized world, most of the people earning, earn their living by agriculture. We know that modern agricultural technologies help us to increase the yield from crops on a specific piece of land. But due to expensive and high maintenance cost, farmers working at a marginal scale are not able to use modern farm technologies. Also, if these farmers lend these machines from farmers working at a large scale, they have to pay a very high rent for it and need to spend on fuel, which ultimately affects their earning after the harvest. With the success to this project, we will be able to reduce cost for cultivating fields as it does not use fossil fuel. Instead, it relies upon green energy, reduce the expenditure upon crops, increasing the income of farmer once the crop is harvested, reduce manual labor, hence automating the agri agricultural industry. The project has multiple specifications that make it capable of doing a wide range of tasks. It includes the project is operated by inbuilt battery of 12 volt 7 AH, a DC motor operated spray, a cultivator, a seed spreading mechanism. Renewable energy solar based battery charging system that makes it self efficient for fuel. Plug and play option for charging. It is compatible to grid charging, also making it further convenient for the user. A self manufactured PCB has been used for the internal circuit. He wanted to say our team has prepared a prototype that is an economic machine that can do activities like plowing, sowing seeds, and spraying pesticides. The project is powered by two batteries connected in series. There are five buttons connected with controller to control the previously stated processes, plowing and seed spread mechanism. Three of these buttons are configured on the different categories and sizes of seeds. As the button for the motor is turned on, the DC gate motor makes the wheel move forward along with the device while the rest of wheels at the back provide support to the same. When the pump is turned on by pressing the button for pump set on the PCB box, the pump starts up and pumps the liquid pesticide filled in the storage tank which is placed in the center of the project. The plowing chases close the field as the project moves forward. The seed mechanism works parallel to it and sows the seeds after a specific interval of time. Our product is highly beneficial for small-scale farmers residing in Indian villages or villages uh, uh, in the world who may not have the financial means to afford expensive tractors or modern machinery. The project specifically caters to farmers who cultivate less than one hectare of land and engage in commercial farming activities. The project would cost around 22,000 to 25,000 INR once it is manufactured. As of our future goals, we are planning to increase the number of defined categories for the seed spread mechanism and to launch a new upgraded hybrid agro technology 2.0 version with greater adaptivity. With this, we conclude our presentation and are open to any questions regarding the same.
really in your life you need a doctor a policeman a preacher but every day three times a day you need a farmer over 690 million metric tons 30 percentage of the world's total agricultural produce we are talking about a 940 billion dollars worth disaster you see every year anywhere between 35 percentage of the world's total agricultural produce is wasted on account of post harvest losses and hence working with not one not two but seven sdgs presenting anrakshak upon, upon research, research we found out an increase in the following parameters is observed hence we have made a device which is equipped with mq9 mq135 and dsc11 sensors for measuring levels of carbon dioxide carbon monoxide nitrous oxide temperature and humidity now i'll be presenting a demo video regarding the same is the video visible no the video is not visible yet Not yet. We can't see the video. Actually, I've just shared your window. That's right. right. Once the installation is complete, we provide our consumers with the calibration option, from where it takes the base values and sends a warning message if the emissions of the gases is greater than normal. adding on to our newest development stage we have created a web application providing a better user interface and seamless connection here you can see okay so the i'll share the web application here. link in the chat okay right. amit now talking about the features which make our device special wireless monitoring on your device low cost and easy installation gases sensing humidity and temperature monitoring right ashi all right i'll read that with the success to this project we will be able to reduce food grain wastage remove hunger related problems do more exports of food grains hence increase the country's economy increase employment and reduce the overall carbon dioxide emissions with anrakshak we dream of never stopping hence you can see our progression from phase 1 to phase 2 and finally to phase 3 and hence with this we conclude our presentation and are open to any questions regarding the same Awesome. Thank you so much. And for our final presentation, we have the air conditioner power optimizer group. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to start now. Okay. How many times we have seen ACs, lights? fans are just running in classrooms and or in your houses without no occupant inside we should solve this problem of course we should it will save our energy as well as the bill in a power as well as a bill in electricity how many times it has happened that you have forgotten to turn off ac or you have seen at some places that there are there is an empty area or there is no occupant present but the ac is still on do you know how much power and money is wasted so here are we with our project ac power optimizer while this dilemma seems to be unsolved it has a potential solution exist in a form of motion detector
but those devices are found to act according to the present time to turn on and turn off but if it will happen again and again the ac will have heavy damage so here you can see that 12.4% is heat is emitted by ac so now we are presenting our innovative device to sort out this problem to reduce the heavy damage we have created a unique algorithm to create the gap between on and off transition the actual way how our project work is when the motion is detected the ac will turn on and when a person will leave the ac will turn off after 10 minutes which will uh, do not affect the ac we have segregated the cost in two parts one is budget and another is cost of product in which the cost of insulation and wiring is included the video our product works everywhere by at homes and offices so here you can see that total number of classroom in average engineering colleges are 40 and total money wasted uh, during summers which is four month it is around 5000 50000 and total money wasted a whole year is around 90000 but the cost of insulation in every 40 uh, classrooms is around only 14% so you can understand why a project is worth it or why we should only choose ac optimizer so i would like to conclude our product uh, and want to i want to say you have a back seat and you look at the virtual presentation So the video, how our product will look like. So these are the pictures of some of our projects, and this is our team. And here are our mentors, Miss Anil Ma'am and Arun Sir. So I will just share the video once. I guess the audio sharing is not there. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Great. If you want to share your video link in the chat box, that would be great. So that way we can um, start with our panel discussion. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Any questions? Yeah, I'm sure you have a a bunch of questions. So we're gonna actually move on to our panel discussion piece. Thank you so much to all the teams that presented and for this opportunity. Um, now that we'll take in the next ten minutes or so, um, we want to hear from the panelists. And so, panelists, um, we invite you all to share your questions that you might have um, after hearing and listening to other student teams. Um, Um, we're wondering what questions you might have. Maybe um, if you listen to the first group, you might have a reflection or observation about their project. Um, maybe you have something that raised for you a question or um, something that you're wondering more about. Um, or maybe you want to share your uh, future um, designs about your project. So we invite you all to start sharing any questions that you might have. So I'll open up the floor. So I'll actually start. I have a question for um, all the groups, really. So anyone who wants to respond to this, um, you're welcome to respond. But my question um, is about. Um, I'm wondering how you all came to an agreement about your challenge. Um, if you worked on a team with more than one person. I'm sure that you all had different ideas or different challenges that you wanted to tackle. So I'm curious to know um, from every team uh, what was your um, process on, like, how did you come to agree on a challenge? So actually, we all in our group, we five, 
we had created this project and we were working on this since a long time and our teacher and, and our mentors they uh, they really helped us uh, to connect with Sienna and through them we got this opportunity to present our project here and we took it as a challenge that we need to give it give our best to the project and uh, we presented this here and i hope that uh, everyone was able to uh, everyone was able to understand what is uh, what is the motto of our model and how we are going to impact the world and have a positive change on it that's great would anyone else like to share a little bit about how your team um, kind of finalized or agreed on your challenge? Here in like the team of Costa Rica, um, the, the idea of the project came along with like a lot of students, the whole like institution come along like talking about this kind of ideas, how can we could help like the social ambient and environment in our community. So it was just like, we were talking and we were discussing and at the end we like decided that we needed to make a change in the institution not only because like it is going to help like uh our society but it's also going to help like the newer generations like first grade or second grade it's like going to change them into having an example mm -hmm. and um we're planning like to continue this project um just like finishing like continuing it like uh and then after we have made like all the progress start uh amplifying to other schools like tell them then we did this we can make this so you can do it too it looks like there was a question in the chat box related to how do you um related to um expanding and and scaling so uh a question for all the student teams um, how do you plan to continue expanding your project and spreading awareness to your challenge? And so um, the students from Canada, uh, you can you can hop off mute if you want to, um, but they shared in the chat box with more resources, we would be able to create more effective projects, um, better solving the 17 world goals. So feel free to jump off mute if you want to speak a little bit more to your comment. And then in team, um, Anna Rakshak, they mentioned that they plan to collaborate with the Food Corporation of India through governmental backing um, so that they can target to reach the masses. That's really, that's really important. Um, we've learned from all of the challenges that, you know, there is a really um, important tie to the community when you bring in community organizations to kind of help advance your projects and your ideas. So that's that's really awesome. Uh, adding on to the comment I just left uh, from team Anrakshak, I guess, I think that uh, collaborating with FCI or the Food Corporation of India is actually the best approach we can have to reach the masses as our product is targeting the cold storage owners and FCI deeply works with them hand in hand. And through this model, we can, uh, with, the, with the help of FCI, we can reach to the masses in India. And once the model is successful here, we will plan to push it forward to other countries abroad as well. That's amazing. So another question that I have for all student teams, so um, maybe, uh, we could learn a little bit more about um, what you experienced in your project and maybe what you learned from it. So more specifically, I'm wondering from all student teams, um, what challenges or issues um, did you face when throughout your process of coming up with your product? Um, is there anything that you didn't anticipate happening that did happen? Um, and then what did you learn from that? Did you gain any life skills? Did you learn something new about yourself or about your team? So um, maybe we can start with the team from Canada. Would you um, like to share any challenges and things that you learned from those challenges? Let me start through here. Um, so, uh, 
for, for me, uh, I think the main problem I had is what would happen if our plan didn't work for um, our group, or we made a crane that would help get the trash out of water. And several times we had to remake the material since we kept them using cardboard and would get wet from the water. So that was certain uh, problems that we just had to think around. And I do think it improved uh, our thinking skills or enough so that we could get around more problems in life. You know what I think just it would be really helpful to have uh, in the future more resources that we could use, better projects, um, things that would last longer, not as easily destructible, stuff like that would be good for our projects. Sorry about that. That's OK. <laughs>
Thank you for sharing. Is there anything that you might have learned from that from that issue or any life skills that you might have gained from that? I would like to answer that. Absolutely, yeah. we learned many things from that. Even though he was facing a problem to communicate with us, but he did his part absolutely perfectly and was participating in each and every activity we were performing. And even on many of the parts, he was better than us. So yeah, we did learn a lot of things from him as well. That's awesome. Cool. Well, if there are, oh, it looks like we have a few comments. So if you are also in the chat box, you can share any thoughts or any questions and um, you know, share some of your reflections um, around the projects that you heard about today. Awesome. Well, uh, we have about five minutes left and we actually have some, um, a few announcements to share. Um, but before we do, we wanna thank all of the present, uh, presenters and the presentations that we heard from today. Um, you all are out here really making some real uh, changes in your community and um, really kind of working together in the power of collaboration and creativity. Um, we see, you know, all of the great effort that you've been putting into your work. And so we appreciate you taking time out of your schedules to meet with each other. And we hope that you all will continue to stay in touch with each other um, around each other's projects. And so I'm going to go on to the next slide. And um, Jess is going to share a few announcements about um, some events that we have coming up and some ways that you all can stay connected with each other and with us. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Carissa. And just to echo what Carissa said, um, thank you all to our amazing students and their educators for sharing their inspiring work. We have plenty of more opportunities like this to continue supporting um, Youth Voice of Innovation during the Youth, Youth Made Festival. And one of them is our upcoming Ed Camp. So we'll be hosting this Ed Camp Youth Made this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And if you haven't attended an Ed Camp before, it's free and it's open to all educators. And this Ed Camp will be a wonderful opportunity to connect with all educators and youth advocates to discuss supporting and facilitating youth making, activism, art, and design and education. We would love for y'all to join us. And you are also more than welcome to invite your peers, your colleagues, and anyone else who would be interested in attending this Ed Camp. You can register with the Eventbrite link that we'll put in the chat for y'all. And we really hope to see you there this Saturday. And we also wanted to um, send out a reminder about our community awards for the Youth May Festival. So if you attended to support a student team today or any of the panelists and educators, you can fill out a form to give kudos that'll be used to award those who presented at the Youth May Festival. So the link to the kudos form is in the chat as well. And um, our attendees can also complete this form now, or you can complete it at, by the end of the Youth May Festival, which is at the end of the month. We will also be sharing this um, presentation recording through YouTube. So if your attendees or any of your uh, community members would like to watch your presentation at a later time, they definitely can once they have the recording and they can fill out that um, forum to give you kudos. And towards the end of the Youth Made Festival, we'll go through all the kudos that your um, student teams received and we will be awarding those teams that received their kudos. So we'll also have that link in the chat for y'all. And if you have any questions about um, the community awards or anything that we can answer, just please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to answer your questions. And uh, we reached the end of the panel discussion. Again, congratulations to our student teams in Canada, Costa Rica, and India. Uh, we hope you all are very proud of the amazing job you all did today. And we also want to thank our guests for joining the Sienna Challenge student panel discussion. As I mentioned, we have um, plenty of events coming up this next week and the following week. So we have one more panel discussion, the last one next week um, on Wednesday. And these will be student teams in India, Kazakhstan, and the United States. So if you're able to, we would love for you to join us and support our next group of youth leaders next week. We'll have um, the registration link for that student panel in the chat. 
And later on today, we'll be having a global ed chat on Digital Promises Twitter, where we will continue to highlight student voices. So be sure to follow at Digital Promise on Twitter to join the conversation. And you can also follow our new Youth Made Festival Instagram. Use the hashtags um, Sienna Challenge and Youth Made to share your content, your comments, and shout outs on social media. If you also have um, an Instagram page or a Twitter page that you would like to share, please feel free to tag us and add us and we'd be happy to share your content through our pages. I know there's uh, plenty of links that y'all need to track for the next festivities through the Youth Made Festival. So we do have our directory and that'll be one spot where you can scroll through all the upcoming events. You'll be able to look at the information, the date, the times, and as well as registration links. And just as a reminder, the Youth Made Festival is happening these next two weeks, so you can still add um, new or already existing content to the Youth Made directory. We are at time already, but again, thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to pass it back to the amazing Carissa for any final announcements. No, that's pretty much it. Thanks, Jess, um, for sharing the announcements and just a special thank you again to all of the student teams that presented today. Um, we are really rooting for you all from everywhere. And so we're excited to see um, the future of your projects and uh, the future iterations. And we hope to see you all involved in the challenge next year. Um, spread the word to your friends, to anyone that you know might be interested and uh, let us know if you all need any support. So thanks again and take care.